Hi guys, let's take a look at, ooh, this is, uh, sounds intimidating, abstract rational equations. Well, we know what equations are. We know what rational equations are. It's right? just a fancy word for fraction, right? A ratio is a fraction. Abstract, ooh, it's kind of getting funky here, all right? Well, first off, before we do this, what's the general rule for solving for a variable in an equation? Anything. What do you, when somebody, you know, there's a long equation and there's all these X's and numbers and all that jazz, what do you do? You get the number x right by itself right you don't you don't want to find oh i found it negative 4x equals negative 23 or whatever no you're finding what x is by itself well when, once you have that mindset i'm getting everything else over there and the x by itself you do exactly the same thing when you're solving these kind of funky looking equations okay and we'll come in a second but just keep that in your head everything else goes out the window to one side you want your x or your a or your y or whatever they ask you to find on the other side. So let's look at this. All right, so pause and copy. And they're asking you to find M. Well, M is stuck down there at the bottom, okay? But well, here's a very nice, easy, simple way to find M. And this is what you do. You simply multiply the entire equation by the common denominator. That's it. So if you want to write this down in big letters, multiply by a common denominator in big, you know, letters. If you go back and I hope you're still doing your notes like this, you know, you're kind of doing your notebook like that. And it has, you know, 104 to the right or whatever. Put find common denominator. That looks like a sad guy with his eyes closed, doesn't it? Here, he's done two or three algebra equations. Like he's drew, drew, let me draw one just a little bit there. Here, that was a little puddle of drool. And nice, uh, okay, nice little puddle of drool there. Okay, let, let's make it nice and shiny here too, a little, like a little shiny. Okay, oh, what was I doing? Okay, yeah, sorry, algebra, all right, whatever, okay. So, let's multiply it by the common denominator. If you want to go ahead and stick to C over a one to remind yourself it's on the top, do it. The common denominator is XM, right? x times m. Remember last time we did this. If you don't, go back to 103 and look at that uh, lesson again. But when you multiply by these, you know, all, we, we did a cancel each one of these terms. We did cancel, 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 whatever. Okay. Same thing happens. You'll see this. Okay. Well, let's do this one first. We'll multiply xm times uh, 1 over x. Well, you can see that the x's cancel, right? So that, that this cancels. So you have m times 1 over 1. Well, that's just m, right? m. Done. This one, what cancels this time when you multiply the common denominator by b over m? The m's, right? Okay, the m's cancel, you just have xb, right? So it's m plus xb equals, now look at this. You get c times xm, well, let's just call it xmc, right? Okay, don't forget, they're asking us to find m. Well, if you look at this thing, look at that equation. How many m's are there in the equation now? There's two of them, right? Okay. Now you remember back. Let's let's look over here. Let's do a different color. Okay, just to kind of differentiate a little bit. If you had some equation like this, it said, <clears throat> you know, I don't know, four m plus seven equals, uh, yeah, I don't know, three m or something like that. What would you do to that three m? You get it out of there, wouldn't you? This goes over here, and everything else goes over here. You want everything with the m's over here, and everything else over there. Well, you're going to do exactly the same thing. So if you look at this, we're going to move everything with M's onto the left side, and we are going to move everything else out of there, okay? So M, this M stays there. This XMC, there's an X, I mean, there's an M in there, so get it out of there. So it's gonna come over here, becomes negative XMC. This XB, get it out of there. It's out of the way, it's over here, negative XB. Okay, I'll stop right there. That makes sense? You want to get everything with an M together, okay? Now what you want to do though, you're not ready yet because you want to get M by itself. This is not the answer. So what you're going to have to do is go, I want to get M by itself. Oh, wait a second. I can factor it out of both of these terms. Let me pull that M out of there. If I factor it out, what's left? Well, M divided by M is just, don't say zero, it's one, right? Then you have a negative. Then what's XMC with the M factored out? That's just XC, right? and it's still equal to negative xb, right? We're okay so far, right? Okay, let me ask you a question. Here's my, uh, when you have this, 
let's say you had an equation that said five times, I don't know, uh, five times a equals 30, okay? In other words, you had something times the something you're looking for it equals 30. What, would you, what do you do to this side to just get a by itself? You do what? You divide by a, right? I mean, excuse me, you divide by five, right? So you would go, oh, and divide by five so I can get a by itself. Oh, I have to divide this side by five as well. Okay, but you go, that's out of there, right? Well, you're going to do exactly the same thing. You've got, just like you've got the variable you want to solve for, times something, right here, you've got the variable you want to solve for times something. You want this out of there. You want it gone. So you are dividing by this, one minus x c. And since, again, this is an equation, so if you do something to one side, you do it to the other side, right? So you divide this by one minus x c, all right? Well, and like just like over here, you canceled out the fives, over here, you cancel out that this is gone. And now you just have m by itself, and then you have this is your answer. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Real quick warning. In your book, you might look at your book, and they say, oh, here's the answer. xb over xc minus 1. Now look at this and compare it to this one. What is different about this one than the, that one. By the way, both of those are right. What's different about this whole thing than that? And if you look at it, you can go, okay, well, this is opposite xb. That's the opposite of positive b. Positive 1 is the opposite of negative 1. Negative xc is the opposite of positive xc. So my point is this. If you get this as your answer, it might have that in the back of the book exactly like you get it. If it doesn't, as long as the book, book's answer in the back, every single one of their terms is the opposite, you're okay. Move to the next problem. You're done. Okay? So let's go over one more time, real quickly. Multiply by the common denominator. Get yourself a nice equation like this. Move everything you're looking for with the letter you look, all the terms of the letter you're looking for over to the left. Everything else goes to the right. Divide by that. Uh, uh, the number, or the, excuse me, the uh, term that you're looking for, the M, A, X, whatever it is, and then you got your answer. There it is. Let's try another one, all right? So pause and copy. Okay, well, we know we are going to be finding the common denominator, right? So let's find it. Here it is. It is B times D, and if you want to put the over one, fine. Okay, let's work on this baby first here. All right, so we've multiplied them by this. The B's cancel, correct? So you just have D times A. All right, done. Work on this one next. If you multiply it by C over D, the D's cancel, right? So we just have plus B times C. There you go. Yoink. Then we have an equals, and of course the last one is just B times D times X. All right, we are looking for B. Remember what we did last time. Everything we want, we put it on the left side. Everything, the BC is already good the way it is. We, we got it, the B's over there. This, however, is not, it needs to be moved over. We have minus b d x because we changed sides. Okay, this needs to go away. It becomes negative d times a. All right. What do you remember about how we solved it? What's next? What do we need to do to these two terms here? Pull the b out. Right. The b goes away. If you pull the b out, you have a c left. Then you have minus what? D x. Right. Okay. I'm assuming you said d x. Okay, then this, uh, you know, what we're looking for, times something equals something, that's the same thing as going, you know, 2x equals 10. 2 times this equals 10. Oh, we divide by the other thing. We're looking for that, so we divide by the other thing to get rid of it on both sides. So we're looking for this, so we divide by the other thing, which is that, and we divide by the other thing, which is that. And of course, these cancel. That cancels out. And now we've got our equation, just like we want it. B is equal to, yoink, right here. And again, here's another perfectly correct answer that you might see in the back of your book that looks different from yours. If the back of the book has positive DA over, let's say, negative C and positive DX, <coughs> as long as all three of those terms 
are the opposite sign, you're fine. And again, the, the denominator might have, it might be in different order, like dx minus c. That's okay as well. All right, pause and copy. Okay, well, let's, this is kind of weird. This is a little more in the middle this time, but uh, it's okay. We can find x. Well, the common denominator is b times x, right? b times x. So let's do this one first. When we multiply, the b's cancel, so we just have x times a. Done. Okay. This one, we have bx times c. Nothing cancels on that one, so that's going to be a minus bxc. Yep. That's going to equal. And we multiply this one. You tell me what cancels. The x's, right? Mm -hmm. The x's cancel, so we have equals b times d. They want us to find x. Wow, okay, this is, uh, this is set up nicely because all the x's are already over there for us. All right, so we were just, we just going to take out the x here. And what's left? You tell me. Right? When I pull out the x from both of those terms, what's left? A is the first one minus what? BC. There we go. Okay, that equals B times D. All right, there's one last step to do. What is it? Yeah, okay, we're going to divide by... A minus B C. Now, if you you don't, if you get to a point where you know what you're doing, you're quick about it. You know you're dividing by A minus B C. You don't have to write it twice if you don't want to. Just go done. You don't have to make that noise. If your mom and dad are coming by your your bedroom or something, they can they can listen in and go. You can be going. You know, they'll know exactly that you are doing algebra. Maybe you better explain that to them. Okay. All right, let's try the next one. It says, look at this one. This is different. What's different about it? Ooh, four terms. Four terms. Okay, but you know what? We know how to do this. We just do it one more time. That's it. So pause and copy if you need to. All right, I like to put a one over mine just to remind myself I'm multiplying by the numerator and denominator. So you tell me, what's the uh, uh, common denominator? Xn, yes. I'm assuming you said Xn. If you didn't, no, that's wrong. Okay. All right. Well, let's do this first one here. X is cancel. We have N times A. Okay. Then we have a minus. All right. Then we have uh, nothing cancels. So we have Xny. And that is gone. Okay. Then we have a plus. And what cancels here? N's cancel, right? So we have XM. All right, that's a goner, and that equals, and we have XN, XN times K. Okay, what are we supposed to find here? X, okay, X, good grief, there's three of these terms with X's. Okay, this is gonna be a hoot. Okay, well, at least two of them are where we want them to be. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead first and move over the NA. It looks like ha over there. Well, that's not funny. Okay, so minus NA. That goes. Okay, let's do this. Um, let's see here. I'll just, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the XM first. XM. Then I'll go minus XNY. Of course, we've already gotten rid of that. And then, okay, we did that. We did that. And let's move this over. If I move it over, it becomes negative XNK, right? So negative XNK. Now we're in good shape. Okay. Now, what do you do? Divide by x, right? We're going to divide this by x. So if you divide by x, we can just go, that's going to be an m there. That'll be ny minus nk. All right, that equals negative na, or ha. Okay. All right, there's only one last step to do, and that's to divide both sides by this. So we can just go ahead and write it in one step if you want. x equals negative n. A all over M minus N Y minus N K. By the way, you know, you might be asking, what the heck is the deal with this? Well, it's just, a, it's just another way of figuring out this is a true way that we can find an X because it is very useful sometimes. If you're doing some kind of an experiment and you figured out some kind of a formula where you go, this works every time, but I just, wow, I, I don't know how much, let's say X equals uh, pressure or something because X stand, you know, stands for pressure. Um, 
I don't know, let's say it stands for some computer chip size or something like that. I don't know, people invent stuff all the time. Well, you know, it's not sometimes as useful sitting down there in the bottom of a fraction or an equation. Sometimes you just want to go. I want to get exactly, I want to get, the, you know, the size of the chip is equal to, and then I can manipulate this stuff down here and I can figure out how big it can be and, and still fit into the computer or whatever. So that is a very helpful skill to be able to do, is to isolate one variable and solve for it to the exclusion of everything else. You can work on that by manipulating this stuff. So very helpful thing. Okay, well, let's try A and B, and then uh, we will uh, end it up for today. So pause it and try A. All righty. Let's see here. The common denominator is MB. So let's work on this baby first here. So MB, the M's cancel. So we have 3B. Z. Don't put B3Z. That sounds like some kind of a, I don't know, some kind of a, you know, essential oil supplement or something like that. Your mom makes you take in case you've got a, you know, I don't know, a tickle in your throat or a herniated disc or something. All right, the second one, the B's cancel. Gone. So plus MN. All right, third one, nothing cancels. So we have, you know, MB. F, and we're solving for what, B? Okay, so let's get this baby over here, and let's get this MN over there, all right? So we have 3BZ uh, minus MBF equals negative MN, or HA. Okay, sorry, that didn't make sense. Okay, so let's take the B out of here. That's what we're trying to find here. So we get 3Z. We got M times F which equals M, negative MN, or HA. Okay, so B to get it by itself, of course we know what to do now. It's negative MN over 3Z minus M times F. And don't forget, anytime you see an answer in the back of the book, it might have every single one of these terms with an opposite sign. If it does, you're in good shape, go to the next one. Okay, all right, pause and try B. Okay, let's get a little more exciting color here. Here's purple. Okay, so x over 1, s over 1. I want to put this. So we have y, m, <coughs> or ha as our common denominator. Okay, let's try, try this one first here. All right. So y over y is gone. So 3 times a times m is 3am. Okay, minus, and we're going to do y, m, s because that doesn't change very much. Okay, gone. This one here, uh, if you multiply this, the m's are gone. In this case, we have y times k. All right, and that's gone. Okay, and this one, nothing cancels, so we have y, y m, x. So y times m times x. All right, what about those ones? Okay, m. So here's an m, here's an m. Oh boy, here's an m too. All right, well, let's get, let's switch these out so we get them. So I'm leaving three a m. I'm leaving YMS, and I'm going to ch chunk over that uh, negative YMX, and I'm chunking over the Y times K. That's going over there. Okay. So I'm pulling out my M. What's left? I got my 3A. I got YS. I got YX. That equals negative YK. And, of course, we know the last thing we need to do is just write this negative YK with this as our denominator, 3A minus ys minus yx and that is it and don't forget all three of those uh, all four of those terms if they are completely the opposite uh, you're totally fine you the right answer okay hope you guys have a very nice uh, day and we'll see you next time bye